This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi. We are talking with retired FBI Special Agent Jennifer Coffindapper right now. Let's talk about uh, Manson, a uh, little throwback. Uh, Leslie Van Houten, a uh, member, obviously, of a Charles Manson family involved in the two killings in 1969, uh, up for parole. The board saying, yeah, we think so. There's still some more hurdles to go through uh, for that to actually take place. Uh, this is kind of a question of, is this appropriate? I mean, she was involved in stabbing uh, someone 41 times uh, back in 1969. Uh, granted, it was under... Charles Manson and how much control he had over them. Uh, but is this someone who should be considered for parole or just continue to spend the rest of their lives behind bars? No, oh, my opinion is no. You know, they received the death penalty early on. That was commuted and they got that, you know, they received that grace. Uh, this isn't about whether she's rehabilitated, whether this 73-year-old woman is going to go out and do another crime. This is about punishment. Mm -hmm. This is about the fact that she's had a life. She's been able to have telephone calls. She's been able to, uh, you know, live somewhat of a, uh, at least, you know, as much as you can, meaningful life, enjoy a meal, have communication with loved ones. And that is something that was taken from the LaBiancas. Recall also the brutality of this. You mentioned 41 times in, in Rosemary yeah. was stabbed. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to get graphic because I yeah. think that's important to the point here. Uh, they took the blood from these victims and wrote all over the walls. I mean, that's sticking your fingers and all of this blood uh, to, uh, uh, you know, acquire the blood to write and smeared all over the walls. They wrote with a knife war in the belly of uh, Mr. LaBianca. Um, they uh, sat down and, and ate afterwards at their house. Um, Charles Manson was nowhere near them. I understand everybody says under the influence, they were brainwashed, they were doing LSD. It takes a, a special, is that the right word? Yeah. It takes a demented human to be able to do that to another. Yeah. And, and I, 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 my, always my, um, thoughts and concern regarding justice are with the victims and the victims' families. Sharon Kate's, uh, or Sharon Tate's uh, sister has come out and said, and I realize uh, Van Houten wasn't on the Sharon Tate murder, but still her co-conspirators were mm -hmm. uh, part of her group was, and and she's come come out obviously against this. I think it's just horrible. It's even being considered. And it's one of those things where you're exactly right. The public does need to understand exactly what happened. It's easy to look at this 73 year old woman and go, oh, look, she looks like the person that, you know, gives out cookies at the deli by the Piggly Wiggly. Uh, <laughs> she's not. Uh, obviously, what she did is horrific. And it's not just, oh, she ran up and did it. And he was right behind her saying, do it, do it. No, they were not even in the same place. This was a matter of some free will. And then to continue to go through the scene and do what they did, you're exactly right. It, it takes a very demented, sick type individual to be capable of doing something like that. And and I think the question is, if you are capable of doing that at one point in your life, period, uh, yeah, who's to say you couldn't do it again? I, I doubt the 73-year-old's going to be go doing repeating that. But at the same point, it was done. She did it. And yeah the victim's families deserve that individual to be paying for the crime that they committed. How do we even get to the point where you get somebody who was on death row uh, to be able to be up for parole period once that was lifted? I think it's, it's a fallacy in the, in their system. I, I mean, I, you know, I'm all for following our system of justice, but obviously this is very flawed. And I really want to circle around Tony to why, other than probably this was the first case that uh, as a young woman, you know, I read Helter Skelter, which is the book that really chronicles this case. Yeah. And and so I would, I think this is, that was probably my first true crime case I knew about. Yeah. Um, I really think it's important for people to read Helter Skelter to really understand what these people did to these bodies and to these individuals. And fast forward now to Brian Koberger, if he's convicted of this 
And now, and then we look at years later when he's 73, if he doesn't get the death penalty, him asking for parole, him trying to get something commuted, him arguing. uh, In other words, right now, people are incensed by the murder. And we haven't even heard the details, Tony. I think when we know the details of how they were slaughtered, Mm -hmm. people are going to be more enraged. But right now we don't. But compare that, Tony, to that's the same feeling that people had in 1969. Mm -hmm. I believe there were nine total murders uh, that Charles, at least as a conspirator, is is connected with. Um, This was horrific what they did to the Tates and the Mm LaBiancas. Horrible. And, and, you know, people back then were, were understood. And I compare it to this now. You know, memory fades with time, and that's why you have people wanting to get her out. Yeah. Uh, you're exactly right. You know, sometimes it takes that uh, that wake up call, like reading Helter Skelter, to put people back and go, "Oh yes, this did indeed happen. This isn't just some scary myth or movie or whatever that one watched. Uh, these were real people, and these these crimes certainly were committed." This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi. Retired FBI Special Agent Jennifer Coffin-Daffer, thank you so much for your insights uh, onto that and the perspective of looking back at just what that crime was all about. If you have any comments, you want to raise your opinion on this or any of the cases we're following for you, we have a phone number for that. It's 888-5-KILLER, 888-554-5537 love to hear your thoughts may end up playing him back on murder in the morning and discussing how you guys feel always open to your thoughts you can also reach out on twitter at tony b pod that is where i am at at tony b pod on twitter i'm tony bruski stay with us 